Mississippi State opened the season full of expectation with a seasoned defense and a young offense. The first of seven home opponents was Middle Tennessee State. Leading 10-0 midway through the second quarter, the Bulldogs took control of the game. They're working at the tight end spot right now. Bulldogs out of the eye formation and back to throw. And firing out of the backfield complete to Griffith who grabs it at midfield. Races to the 40, down the sidelines to the 30. It's going to go all the way as he gets the block. He did for a touchdown. The two wide receiver left, one wide receiver right formation. Drops back in the pocket, fires underneath, wide open the fullback. And the Fenzo Miller makes the catch in the touchdown. Mississippi State led 23-0 at the half and continued to roll up yardage and points in the second half. So they need a good solid yard, maybe a yard, uh, maybe four feet. Bulldogs on the pitch, give it to the tailback and driving for a yard and more. Oh, Justin Griffin, he's going to break it all the way. He'll take it in for a TD. Well, all he needed was one, but he got 25 and another touchdown. Wayne Madkin threw for 235 yards. The defense did not allow a touchdown until the final play of the game, and the Bulldogs had gotten the 1999 season off to a solid start with a 40-7 victory. <laughs> Neighborhood rival Memphis came to Scott Field for the second matchup of the year. Scott Westerfield gave the Bulldogs an early 3-0 lead, and then the defense took over. The Bulldogs' lone touchdown of the game came late in the first half as the Bulldogs cap a 60-yard drive. Bulldogs in a two tight end set. Power eye set strong to the right. Griffith is the deep back. He's on the carry. He's to the goal line. He scores. Justin Griffith got a great, great surge on that forward wall and stuck it in the end zone. Nice work on the offensive line. Mississippi State took a 10-0 lead into the halftime but Memphis blocked the Bulldog punt in the third period and set up a short run and cut the state lead to just 10-7. Late in the third period, the Bulldogs go on the move. Calvin Love goes in motion from left back to right. Bulldogs stay on the ground, and Miller breaks a tackle, fights in the secondary, fights his way past the 30, and stays on his feet inside to about the 26-yard line. And he'll attempt an elongated extra point here for a field goal. The kick is away, the kick is up, and the kick is good. And the Bulldogs stretch a three-point lead to six to make it 13 to seven. Mississippi State on top. Of Clinging to a 13 to 10 lead in the fourth quarter, State fumbled and the Tigers recovered at the Bulldog 39. After one play, the Tigers are second and one at the 30. The Tigers are forced to attempt a long field goal. That is no good. And Mississippi State claims a 13-10 victory over Memphis. Oklahoma State had beaten the Bulldogs soundly a year ago in Stillwater, and State was determined to return the favor. From the opening kickoff, the Bulldogs were ready. Again, sets the eye in the backfield with wide receivers left and right. Butler and now he rolls right to throw out of the backfield. Throws complete to Griffith who goes to the 30, gets a block, breaks a tackle, races to the 40, knocked off his feet at the 45. Justin Griffith hit down by Evan Howell in the secondary. A well-executed play. Again, there's movement on the line of scrimmage, but the kick is away and the kick is high and the kick is long. And again, it is good. And Mississippi State will take a 3 to nothing lead. Oklahoma State was greeted by an emotional Bulldog defense. 
Tiger goes up underneath. Bulldog walks their linebackers in very close, and he's back to throw. And his under heavy pressure is going to be hit and going to be sacked and fumble the ball. There's a big pile up. I don't know who's got it. I think Bulldogs. the Bulldogs do. They say they have anyway. That's right. Late in the first quarter, the state offense took advantage of a good field position and got their first touchdown. Here's Wyatt brings his ball club on the line of scrimmage in the standard eye again. Now uses motion with Love back toward the formation. Wants to throw. Does throw a corner pattern. Love's got it for a touchdown. Kelvin Love. In the second period, freshman running back Dante Walker broke loose. Matkin checks a five-man front as the linebackers walked up inside. They blitz another, pitches to the left side. Walker gets a block, breaks it at the 45 to the 40, cuts back at the 30, races to the 20. One man can catch him. He can't. Touchdown, Walker. The Bulldog defense continued to harass the Cowboy quarterback. Bulldogs in a three-man front. Tiger rolls right to throw, looking under pressure, in trouble. Tiger's going to be hit, going to be ridden down all the way back to the eight-yard line. The Bulldogs took a 19-3 lead into the dressing room at the halftime. In the third quarter, it was more of the same. Solid Bulldog defense. Run one running back behind Ben Bowling. Bulldogs show blitz from the outside, and they're going to hit the quarterback and drop him for a loss at the 30-yard line. Bowling... Puts two wide receivers left and right, wants to throw, has time, now is going to be dropped back at the 20-yard line. It looked as if he had time to throw, but the Bulldogs with no blitz got uh, Ellis Wims through there. Leading 22-11 to 11 in the fourth period, the Dogs look to seal the victory. If there's a second and 33 play in the playbook, I don't think I've ever seen it. <laughs> but we'll check it out of the shotgun formation. Matkin wants to throw. Underneath screen, pass complete. Breaking it to the 35, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, Mississippi State. There's your play right there. The icing was on the cake as Mississippi State won 29 to 11. An impressive intersectional victory over this opponent from the Big 12 Conference. South Carolina came to Starkville as the Bulldogs' fourth consecutive home game and their SEC opener. Field position played a big part, and Mississippi State grabbed an early lead. He'll punt from that area on fourth and ten. Gets a high snap, pulls it down, kicks it away, drives it toward Kelvin Love at the 44, who grabs it down to the 40, down to the 30-yard line, and off his feet at the 28-yard line. The kicker, of course, is Scott Westerfield, who has uh, hit seven out of nine field goals thus far in the young campaign. The pass back is good. The kick is away. It is high. It is long. It is good. Bulldogs take a 3 to nothing lead over South Carolina on a 43-yard field goal by Westerfield. Late first quarter, South Carolina on their most impressive drive of the game. They threaten the Bulldog goal line. Bill Petty, two tight ends set. Bulldogs in an eight-man front. Petty is going to be hit and dropped all the way back to the 10. He wanted to throw, and he couldn't get rid of the football. Mississippi State got through. The night in Clinging to a 3-0 lead late in the first half, it's that dog defense again that responds. Mississippi State has just picked off the South Carolina pass. Ashley Cooper to the goal line is a touchdown. Ashley Cooper. Jack, they ran the slip screen to the receiver. Down 10 0 at the start of the second half. The Gamecocks go on another drive deep into state territory. Watson deep, Nee Smith close. The give us to Watson. Watson is stacked up. He cannot go. He cannot go. Bulldogs knocked him down actually for a yard loss. Jack, it looked like everybody on the defensive line. Mississippi State got good field position following a Kelvin Love punt return late in the third period. South Carolina shows a five-man front, a very loose secondary. Brendel goes in motion. Ball is snapped directly to Matkin under heavy pressure. Eludes a man, throws back across the field, puts it up in the end zone for grabs. Caught for a touchdown. Caught for a touchdown, Mississippi State. 
A big mistake there, Jack, by the defender who thought the pass was going to be short to the receiver, Kelvin Love, and he came up, released from Kelvin. John, is that what you saw? He released from him, stepped up, left Kelvin wide open. Steve, that's exactly what happened. I don't know what the, the defender was thinking about, but he was running step to step with uh, Kelvin Love and got in the end zone and just came back toward the goal line. The Bulldog defense shuts out South Carolina. Mississippi State goes 4-0 on the season, and they open conference play with a solid victory. Vanderbilt is off to a good start, having played Alabama close and defeated Ole Miss. The game in Nashville is being billed as the biggest home game for the Commodores in 20 years. And that is the atmosphere in which Mississippi State encounters Vanderbilt in their first road trip of the year. They work out of a one running back set. Hogan is the one wide receiver. Vanderbilt tries to go left, fumbles the football. It looks like the Bulldogs have recovered it, and they have. And coming up with it, Alvin McKinley, the nose guard. Rod Gibson is on the wing. It's Gibson on the carry off the left side. He plunges and he scores. Rod Gibson plunging it in behind. Excellent blocking on the left side. Late in the first period, the Bulldogs go on the move. Kenny Williamson up out of the fullback spot. On the inside option play, Matkin keeps it, fakes the pitch, keeps it, slides in the secondary, now pitches it. Laney breaks a tackle and goes to the 15-yard line. Finally, Lamont Turner finally corralled him and dropped him at the 15. And Rod Gibson goes in motion from right back to left. Bulldogs pitch it to Justin Griffith, who'll turn and score in the corner. Justin Griffith into the corner, picks up the touchdown. Leading 15 to nothing midway through the second quarter, the Bulldogs offense looks for a quick six. Vandy will show that five-man front and linebackers in very tight, ready to uh, blitz if they desire. Matkin wants to throw on first down, pass up the left side, caught by the Bulldogs. Calvin Love steals the ball away from the defender. He's at the 20, he's going all the way to the 10. He's gonna score. What a beautiful play, Jack. He was covered very well by the cornerback for Vanderbilt, but he was able to see over his shoulder the ball was coming. He pulled up a step, got behind the corner, pulled it in, and then the corner fell down, and it was clear sailing. The Bulldog defense stops the run. Use their H back in motion and go on the ground with a swing to the outside and to the 29-yard uh, line is McGrath and he is murdered by Ashley Cooper who really literally drove him in the ground. The Bulldogs stop the pass. Zalman from the shotgun into pocket to throw loops it deep down the left-hand side and Fred Smoot intercepts the ball along the 20-17 yard line a penalty marker down as he and the would-be receiver collided and the state kicking game is solid too. Vanderbilt puts eight men on the line of scrimmage. Good snap. Walker steps into it, gets his kick away, a driving kick away from Williams. Williams going to run it down along the 28, grab it, try to get to the outside along the 25, knock down at the 28, the point from which he originally started. With a solid 32 to nothing lead late in the third quarter, the Bulldogs continue to pressure Vanderbilt quarterback Greg Zolman. Works with one running back, offset to the left. Bulldogs show a five-man front. Zalman back to throw, runs out of containment, looks to throw deep upfield, and is knocked off his feet at the 19. Fumbles the ball. The Bulldogs pick it up, run it in the end zone, but the play will be dead. The Bulldogs score their final touchdown late in the third period. Wayne Matkin checks that five-man front for Vanderbilt, rolls to throw, comes out of the backfield, throws it to Rainey, who will fight to the 30, inside to the 25, races to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Chris Rainey. Chris Rainey is doing a heck of a job today, Jack. He's really running the ball well. When he catches it like he did there, he's getting downfield and gets the touchdown. State adds a fourth quarter field goal and win convincingly on the road at Vanderbilt 42 to 14. A trip to Auburn was the next stop on the Bulldogs' schedule. 
Jordan-Hare Stadium, 80,000 plus fans, a tough place for SEC opponents. Scoreless in the second quarter, Auburn makes a big play. From that formation, asks for the football and receives it, drops to throw, comes over the middle, pass is caught by Carter, he's at the 45, races to midfield, breaks a tackle, races all the way inside the 30, to the 20, to the 15, he's going to score. The Bulldogs respond after the Tiger TD. Wayne Matkin from the I formation, stays on the ground on the delay, gives it to Desenzo, breaks it up the middle, breaks in the secondary, runs over a tackler, fights out to the 47. But the Auburn Tigers make another big play, and this time it's in the kicking game. See if Auburn, with eight men on the forward ball, will pressure the punter. They do, and they block the punt. Picked up by Mississippi State, but Auburn's going to get the ball. Auburn blocked the punt right up the middle. The Tigers pick up three points from the Bulldog mistake, and Auburn takes a 10-0 lead into halftime. Early in the second half, Auburn is in great position to score again following a pass interception. Klein checks a six-man front for the Bulldogs, rolls back right to throw, out of the pocket, is looking, 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 throws upfield, passes. Oh, almost, almost intercepted. Almost, Jack. right. Somebody got a hand on it. It was big John Hilliard who's been all over the field today. We await the snap back. It's good. The ball is on the ground. The kick is away. High and long and good. Auburn leads Mississippi State 13 to nothing with 12.26 to go. Down 16 to 3. Just four minutes left to go in the ball game. Now it's up to that Bulldog offense. Can they come to life? Again, they'll work out of the shotgun formation. Auburn in a four-man defensive front. Again, Matt Wyatt wants to throw, comes over the middle, pass caught by Sermones, who's inside the 35 and down to about the 33-yard line. Wyatt checks that four-man front again, and from the shotgun, handles the ball, is back to throw, rolls out of the pocket, fires it in the middle. Justin Griffith grabs it, fights his way to the 20, and down to the Auburn 16. Crowd is alive here at Auburn, and Wyatt handles the ball, looks to throw, runs the of the pocket to the right side. Fires it toward the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown by C.J. Simone. Now the score is 16 to 10, and the Bulldog defense is asked to get the ball back for a final chance. Two tight ends, one wide receiver, eye formation in the backfield for the Auburn Tigers, and the Tigers stay on the ground to Owens, who stopped uh, behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of a yard. On the tackle, Kevin Sluter. See if the Bulldogs will come after it. Duval from the two-yard line is maybe going to take a safety. Runs into the end zone and now runs out of the end zone and takes a safety. With 50 seconds on the clock, Duval took a safety. The punt comes from the 20-yard line. That's where the free kick uh, is executed. And Duval kicks this one a driving long spiral and backpedaling all the way to the 12-yard uh, line is Peg Prather. Comes out to the 20, to the 25, breaks up the middle to the 30, crosses the 40, fights to uh, midfield in Auburn territory at the 48. Matt Wyatt, who engineered a drive a few moments ago of 68 yards, was going to try to put 48 yards into the end zone. Wyatt back to throw, sets up, looks, fires in the middle, Grendel's got it, races to the 30, races to the 20, races to the 10, and out of bounds. Grendel oh. out of bounds. This crowd is alive. Wyatt from the shotgun, two backs alongside. Auburn in a four-man front. Wyatt gets the ball. Wyatt back to throw. Wyatt looks. Fires toward the end zone. Passes. Caught for a touchdown by Matthew Butler. Matthew Butler, Jack. What Matthew a catch. Butler. I thought that was going to be intercepted. The defender for Auburn jumped in front of Butler and went through his arms. And Butler gets it, John Carrero. Steve, you're exactly right. We got a you know, penalty for you know celebration, but who gives a flip? But you know, I don't know how Matt Butler caught that football because, as you said, the Auburn defender was right there, and he just kept good, great concentration and held on to the football. Truly one of the great comebacks in Mississippi State football history. Mississippi State 18, Auburn 16. The Bulldogs scored 15 points in the final two and a half minutes to claim the victory. That was a great example 
that it, it's a team sport. It's a great example of somebody coming in and playing. It's a great example of never, never giving up. Never, 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 never giving up. No, yes. Now, where's Matt? Right there. Yeah. 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 Something I'm, I'm proud of is I know that all my teammates, instead of you know bragging and running off the mat, the first thing we're gonna do is thank God for this victory. Yes. 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 More importantly, I, you know, I thank God for what He's done in my life for leading me to this team because I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. I always say I'm proud to be at Mississippi State. Homecoming 1999 brought old rival LSU to town. The Tigers, who had been struggling, proved early that they had come to play, keeping the ball for nearly seven minutes in their opening drive. Straight eye in the backfield. Again, Mealy's on the carry. Rondell cannot go. Going to be stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. Alvin McKinley and Kevin Sluter got excellent penetration. And Booty rolls back to throw. Sets up. Looks. Fires to the left side. Passes. Caught along the 25-yard line. Mealy the deepest of the three. And Booty gives it to Mealy again. And Rondell off the right side. Finds the end zone. Mealy crashes it through. In the second period, LSU leads 10-0, and Mississippi State is trying to find some way to get on the scoreboard. Gibbs is standing seven yards deep in the end zone, awaiting the snap from center. Gibbs gets the good snap, steps into it. The ball is blocked. It's going out of the rear of the end zone. It is a safety. The Bulldogs block the punt, and it will be a safety. Down 10-2 after the safety, the Bulldogs get the ball back in good field position. High formation set for Mississippi State. Madkin rolling back on play action. Throws up the middle. And the pass is caught by Huntington at the 33, and he's knocked down immediately. Huntington hit down hard. Madkin, long snap count. Play action pass. Wants to throw. Fires deep right side. Pass is caught at the 15-yard line. And out of bounds goes Larry Huntington as he's pushed out by Robert Davis, the defender for LSU. Rob Morgan will hold the ball at the 21-yard line by the kick from Scott Westerfield, who gets it away and gets it up high and kicks it good. Westerfield is good with the field goal, the LSU lead. After trailing 10 to five at the halftime, Mississippi State gets rolling late in the third period. Wayne Matkin will put two wide receivers to the left and one to the right. LSU counters with a 4-3 defensive alignment and Matkin rolls back to throw in the pocket, now being chased out of the pocket, looks to the sidelines and will fire it upfield, and the pass is caught by Kelvin Love, and then takes it out of bounds along the 24-yard line. A great reception by Love. Maybe checking off on the line, stays in there, gives it to the tailback. Walker brings his way inside the 10, plunges to the 5, plunges to the 4. Dante Walker got great blocking in front, and he put on a burst of speed and finally plunged his way before Lejeune could bring him down. Gibson on the wing. And they'll go to the tailback and plunging for the touchdown comes Justin Griffith. Mississippi State took an 11 to 10 lead into the fourth quarter, but LSU blocked a punt and scored. And now trailing 16 to 11, the Bulldogs start from their own 35 with just eight minutes left in the game. LSU in that 4-3 defensive alignment. Matkin to throw into the sideline. Pass complete up to the 40. And Williamson pushed out of bounds along the 40-yard line. LSU loosens up their linebackers, expecting Matkin out of the shotgun to be throwing. He's in the pocket to do that. Fires it in the middle. The pass is caught by Grindle. Races to the 40, to the sidelines. LSU will push him out of bounds uh, inside LSU territory. LSU brings their linebackers in tight as the Bulldogs stay on the ground, and Chris Rainey plunges inside the 15 and fights his way down to the 11-yard line. It'll be strong to the right. Justin Griffith will be the tailback. The carry is to the goal line, and did he get in? No signal as yet. Yes, touchdown. Mississippi State went 65 yards in 14 plays to take a 17-16 lead 
with under two minutes left. And now it's up to the defense to preserve the victory. Now the Bulldogs have got to get a stop here. And Booty rolls back in the pocket to throw and fires. And the pass is intercepted by Mississippi State. Take Prather. Prather picks it off at the 36. Knocked out of bounds at the 40. Intended for Abram Booty. And Take Prather just stepped in there and made the pass interception. For the second straight week, the Bulldogs come from behind and win an important Southeastern Conference game in the final two minutes. National television, Thursday night, one of the nation's top offenses coming to Scott Field to play the Bulldogs, now ranked number eight in the country. The Bulldog defense knew they had their work cut out for them with Howe Mummy's wide open passing game led by Dusty Bonner. Now they bring a strong safety up to the left side as Bonner takes the pass. Ashley Cooper's on the blitz. Cooper's got him. Cooper drops him. At the 45-yard line, Ashley Cooper dropped Dusty Bonner off the blitz. Mississippi State started from their own 11-yard line midway in the first quarter. As Wayne Matkin checks a Kentucky five-man front, two linebackers set, uses running motion, and maybe a penalty flag on the play as the Bulldogs try to go deep on the fly pattern. The Grendel who catches it at midfield, hit from behind at the 40, knocked down at the 36. No penalty flags down. Tight end strong to the right. Madkin back to throw. Stats up in the pocket. Fires inside. Pass caught at the 10. Receiver knocked down just short of the 10-yard line. Calvin Love hit down by Eric Kelly, who set a standard eye in the backfield again. And go to Miller on the pitch sweep left side. Miller turns the corner at the 10, races to the 5, pushed out of bounds, but not until he got into the end zone. Miller goes 11 yards for the touchdown. The Bulldogs had the early 7-0 lead, but then mistakes would give Kentucky scoring opportunities. First, a fumble set up the Cats deep in Bulldog territory. As Harrison goes in motion from right back to left, Bonner wants to throw. Bonner does throw for the corner. It is caught for the touchdown. Beautifully caught ball. Shanklin making the catch. Then the block punt sets up a second Kentucky touchdown. Leading 12-7, Early in the second period, after a short punt, Kentucky is once again in Bulldog territory. The work uh, out of the shotgun formation, handles the ball, drops the throw, fires a deep post pattern that is caught at the six and ducked. Whalen dropped at the six yard line of the five by Ashley Cooper. Ready to work from six yards deep, awaits the snap, gets it, stays on the ground, and they're gonna drive it into the end zone for the touchdown. Anthony White taking it on the draw play to the left side, and White. Kentucky has taken a 19-7 lead, and the Bulldogs need an offensive spark. Kentucky shows three down linemen, three linebackers walking in and out. Again, Madkin to throw, steps up in the pocket, has running room, dashes to the 45, to the 40, and out of bounds along the 38-yard line. They may be coming, they're not. Back to throw goes Madkin, sets up, plenty of time, fires a deep pattern on the post for Kelvin Love, who's got it at the three, knocked off his feet at the three-yard line. What a great catch, Jack, and even if he hadn't caught the ball, they should have thrown a flag. Kenneth Grant was all over his back. Wayne Madkin put that ball the only place that Kelvin Love could catch it. That was over the helmets of both the offensive player, the receiver Love, and the defender, Kenneth Grant, and Kelvin Love pulls it in and makes a great play. Williamson will be up. Justin Griffith deep off on the right side. Is Griffin on the carry, and Griffith's in for the touchdown. Justin Griffith goes over the top. And picks up the TD for Mississippi State. Now back to within five points of the Kentucky lead, the defense stymies the Cats' potent passing attack for the remainder of the half. And the halftime score is Kentucky 19, Mississippi State 14. In the third period, Kentucky finds a way to put more points on the board. And a Chris Samuel field goal makes the score 22-14. But the Bulldogs come right back. He's working uh, with Kenny Williamson in the I formation. Williamson up and a rainy deep. Matt Wyatt back to throw. Wyatt sets up, throws a pattern to the eight yard line, complete, and Calvin Love knocked off his feet immediately. Bulldogs will go into a two tight end set and work on the pitch sweep to Dante Walker who breaks it into the end zone for the touchdown. Boy, he had some great vision on that play, Jack. That was designed to go wide to the left. 
As the teams head into the fourth period, Kentucky now holds a slim 22-20 lead. The Bulldog defense makes sure that the Cats get no more points. Ready to receive the pass. Now brings the running back in close. Rolls back to throw. Under pressure is going to be sacked. Fumbles the football. And the Bulldogs, I think, have recovered it. They have at the 25-yard line. With a minute and 30 seconds left, the Dogs get the ball back at their own 15-yard line. One timeout and at least 50 yards from field goal range. Kentucky showing the four-man rush again. And uh, that's all they're coming with. And Matt Wyatt throwing deep down the right side. Passes caught up near the 40-yard line. And knocked down immediately is the receiver. Second and three for Mississippi State. And Wyatt's back to throw. Fires the sideline pattern. Complete. And out of bounds goes Kelvin Love at the 24-yard line. So the game is on the line right here. We're waiting the pass back. It's put down. Westerfield kicks it long and high. And... Good! Westerfield kicks it through with five seconds on the clock. The Bulldogs lead 23 to 22. The comeback kids have done it again. First Auburn, then LSU, now Kentucky. The Bulldogs are 8-0 for the first time in school history. In life, a lot of people don't ever get to experience this. And there's a lot of football teams around that don't ever. You know, we had a guy right there probably looking down to help us a little bit, too. But I, I got these balls, and we're going to sing after we give the balls out. But I got three balls, and I want to give one. Joe Lee, come here. Yeah. You know, I, I've been around football a long time. I'm an old guy. And I've never been around a guy that's a better team player than this one. Wait a minute. You got to talk, Joe Lee. You guys are a wonderful bunch. I mean, this, this last three weeks has been really amazing, to be honest with you. <laughs> The only thing I can tell you is, you got enough ability to win them all, man. Let's don't land up. Okay, let's take care of ourselves too when we get in our, in other times. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Get down and sneak away. Sneak away. This this one goes to number seven. Hey. Say. The only thing, only thing I could say when we took that sack, I, I stared. Oh. And I looked, I looked down at Joe Lee, and Joe Lee looked at me, turned around, and walked away, like the same thing. <laughs> now this one goes to where Scott. Yeah. Guys, you know when you miss one and you come back and it's on the line yeah. and you got to win it. <laughs> and then, and then, and you do it. Defense, way to hold them out there the second half. <laughs> Offense, way to move the ball when we needed to. Woo! And let's go take care of the tide next week. Yeah! Alabama. A game that would probably determine the SEC West Championship. Played in Tuscaloosa before over 85,000 fans. Late in the first quarter, it is Alabama who gets the momentum. The average is 37 yards on 10 pooch kicks this year. He'll kick from about midfield. Alabama partially blocks it. They grab it in the air. And the guy that makes the catch after the block will bring it back to midfield. Out of the hole to Morgan, Pfluger lines it up. Pass back is good, kick is away, he's got height, he's got length, he's got accuracy. Alabama grabs a three to nothing lead. Trailing three nothing late in that first period, the Bulldogs strike deep. 
Alabama still in a five-man front. Bulldogs Matkin in the pocket to throw. Sets up, has time, looks, fires a deep post pattern down the field, and the ball is caught by Kelvin Love, and down he goes at the 16-yard line. In the offset eye, strong to the right, Williamson is up, and Matkin rolls out, looks in the corner, fires, touchdown Mississippi State as he hit an open receiver in the end zone, and making the catch was Rod Gibson. The 7-3 Bulldog lead doesn't last long. A wing back set to the right for Alabama. One running back, and Zalf rolls to throw, wants to throw deep up the sidelines on the wheel pattern. Alexander's got it at the 40 and dropped it to 37. That's Collins. Off the ground, they move it to the left side to Alexander, who pile drives his way to the one and gets into the end zone. Alexander pile drives his way through. Excellent running. Late in the half, the Bulldogs make a break. Alexander's deep, and Zao wants to throw. Sets up, looking, looking, looking for the sidelines. Fakes there, moves it up the middle, passes. Intercepted at the 31-yard line by Mississippi State Baron Simpson, who leaped high in the air to pull it down. And the Bulldogs get a golden opportunity. But State is unable to take advantage of the interception and trail 10-7 at halftime. With Alabama leading 13-7 in the fourth quarter, the tide threatened again with a first down at the Bulldog 17-yard line. But then, Joe Lee Dunn's defense closed the door. And now Carter goes in motion back to the left, the wide side. And Zao with time is now hit. Zao has dropped all the way back to the 26-yard line. Bulldogs, John Hilliard was the man that dropped him. We'll wait the snap back. Morgan will hold, puts it down. Kick is away. He's long enough. He's high enough. And he missed it. Off to the uh, right side of the goal post. In, no good. Flugner missed it. And the, Bulldogs. the Bulldog hopes are still alive for a comeback victory. Bulldogs will work from the I formation and two wide receivers. Alabama shows a five-man front. Wyatt to throw. Wyatt looking. Comes in the middle. Pass complete. Receiver comes out to the 35 to the 40. And out of bounds near the 45 is Kelvin Love. But that was as far as Mississippi State would go. Penalties kill the drive, and then Alabama kills State's hopes with a late touchdown. Alabama prevailed. Final score, 19 to seven. Next stop for the Bulldogs was War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock to play an Arkansas team fresh from an upset win over Tennessee. The Bulldogs are to score first in this game. Arkansas responds with a 4-2 defensive alignment, playing the wide receivers head up. Now they give him a little cushion as Love goes in motion on the reverse, carries the ball, swings to the outside to the 40, and in front of the Bulldog bench is knocked down hard out of bounds. Arkansas stacks a 6-2 defense in there against the Bulldogs. Matkin to throw out of the pocket. In the pocket, being chased, runs up the middle of the field, gets a block, comes inside the 25, down to the 23. Wide side of the field to his right. The snap is put down by Morgan. The kick is away. It is high. It is long. It is accurate. And the Bulldogs lead Arkansas 3 to nothing with 8.23 to go. Arkansas, with a late first half score, led 7-3 at halftime. The defenses prevail most of the third period. The fullback set to the left side, and the pitch in the reverse comes uh, back to the right side. Behind and in trouble and fumbling the ball. And uh, did Mississippi State get it? Well, they're going to rule it dead, I think. On second down, he has a running back alongside. Three wide receivers. Rolls in the pocket to throw. Pump fakes. Throws deep upfield. And this pass is picked off by Mississippi State. And down the right side comes Smoot. Inside the 40. Down to the 30. Down to the 20-yard line. Cuts back in at the 20. Fights to the 15. Finally brought down at the 14-yard line. Most of that interception return is wiped out by penalty, and with that, a golden Bulldog scoring opportunity. Now trailing 14 to nine in the fourth period, the Bulldogs try to generate another miracle comeback. Two wide receivers left, two to the right. Wyatt back to throw, in the pocket, fires in the middle, pass caught. Receiver at the midfield stripe, knocked off his feet at the Arkansas 47. Arkansas rushing four, 
Back to throw goes Wyatt. Comes in the middle. Pass is caught by Love at the 35. Fights his way to the 33. He's got a first down. Either they score or this ball game is over. Three wide receivers. High formation for Matt Wyatt. Back to throw. Fires it into the end zone for Calvin Love. He's nowhere around. He got knocked, rather Matthew Butler. He got knocked down. There's a penalty flag. It's a tight end. C.J. Simone. The Bulldogs' last second magic disappears in Little Rock. Arkansas prevails 14 to 9. The 96 renewal of the battle for the Golden Egg took place before a sellout crowd at Scott Field and a national television audience on a Thanksgiving night. Ole Miss took the opening kickoff and kept the ball much of the first period. With the ball in Bulldog territory, the defense makes a stand. Again, standard eye in the backfield for Romero Miller. Miller will go to the up back and plunging and fumbling the football, a big pile up. Who's got it, Mississippi State? Absolutely, Jack, Mississippi State. Came After a scoreless first period, Ole Miss is in great field position early in the second quarter. Peterson goes in motion toward the formation. Rebels fake the reverse. They want to throw a deep post pattern. Wide open, Flournoy, touchdown Ole Miss. Things continue to go badly for the Bulldogs. Motion coming to the wide side of the field, and Matkin rolls to throw, fires up the field, passes, batted in the air, and intercepted. Nope, went to the ground. Yep, they're going to call it an interception. Strange, I think. Uh... The interception sets up a field goal, and that puts Ole Miss on top 10-0. Late in the first half, the Bulldogs' offense kicks into gear. Desenzo Miller's the deep man. A hit Miller out of the backfield. Miller's got a little lane in which to run. Past midfield into Rebel territory past the 45. Matkin on second and short, second and five. After the five-yard penalty and the incomplete pass. Stacks the eye in the backfield. Wants to throw quickly to Kelvin Love who grabs it at the 35. Fights his way to the 30. Wayne Matkin. Long snap count. Handles the ball. Goes to his tailback. Bursting in the secondary. Miller, he's going all the way. Desenzo Miller got great blocking in the middle. He broke a tackle on the line of scrimmage, and it was good night, Charlie. He sure did. Jack Michael Fair, Paul Mooney, Kendrick Fairchild, Wes Shivers, Pork Chalk Woman opened a huge hole. And as you say, one of the linebackers came up, tried to bring Miller down. He didn't wrap him up. Miller ran right through it and goes all the way for the touchdown. The Bulldog extra point attempt fails, and after another field goal, Ole Miss is leading at halftime 13 to six. In the third period, turnovers continue to plague Mississippi State. Rebels respond with a 6-5 defensive alignment. Bulldogs use motion, go straight ahead, and plunging for the first down out near the 20, but fumbling the ball, and the Rebels are going to come up with it. Ole Miss again uses Bettis in motion to the right side. They roll Miller to the right side, fires underneath, pass is caught, and in for the touchdown. As Adam Bettis, he was in motion from his wing back. Trailing 20 to six late in the third quarter, the dogs need to make something happen. With Calvin Love in the slot to the left, and back to throw. Wayne Matkin firing to the right side, he's got a man open, caught at the 30-yard line and down at the 20 is Justin Griffith out of the backfield. 
Again, Wayne Metkin checks a four-man front, four linebacker set, wants to throw, fires it in the middle, tight end, got it for a touchdown. Lee making the grab. Now there are less than three minutes to go, and Ole Miss has recovered a fumbled punt at the state 36. The defense must get the ball back. One running back set for Romero Miller, three wide receivers. Flournoy wide to the right, Miller rolls to throw, fires in the right flat, pass is broken up, almost picked off. Bulldogs got a shot at that one. The Bulldogs force a punt and get the ball back on their own 12-yard line. Only two minutes and 10 seconds are left. Rebels are loosening up their secondary defense. They don't want anything to get behind them as the Bulldogs go to the shotgun formation. And Matkin drops back to throw, steps up in the pocket, fires underneath. Pass is caught, and out at the 25-6-yard line, Bulldogs will have a first down. Paul Mooney will snap him the football, which he does. And Matkin drops in the pocket, fires to Matthew Butler, who makes the catch, and comes up to the 44-yard line, and will have a first down. Again, Matkin ready to work. Drops back to throw, sets up, is being hurried, is being hurried, fires it upfield, passes caught, and driving toward the goal line and scoring is C.J. Simone. He was wide open, Jack, about the 15-yard line as Wayne Madkin was having to scramble. With the game now tied at 20-20 and less than a half minute left, will Ole Miss take a shot deep or will they play for overtime? And this crowd is alive in Scott Field as Romero Miller's ready to work. Rolls back to throw. Is going to fire long down the right side. Passes. Fought for and intercepted. Mississippi State down the sidelines. Is going to get out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Eugene Clinton was the man that picked it off. And there are eight seconds left in the ball game. Now it all comes down to one kick. Rob Morgan will hold at the 33. Scott Westerfield will try to win this football game for Mississippi State. We'll wait the snap back. Crowd gets quiet. It's put down. The kick is away. It's long enough. It's high enough. Wrap it in maroon and white. Wrap it in maroon and white. Bulldogs go out in front 23 to 20. Four seconds left in this ball game. Another comeback. Another victory, but none sweeter for Bulldog players and fans than this one. And this ball game is over. Wrap it in maroon and white. And they are going to flood Scott Field. Everybody's pouring out of the stadium. Everybody's heading down on that football field to wrap it up in maroon and white. And never in the history of Mississippi State football in the 47 years that I've been involved in it have I seen a fourth quarter comeback like this. We saw three of them this year that were absolutely miraculous. This is super miraculous. Good job. I'm go, go, go. Seniors, we appreciate you, we love you. Thank you so much, but I gotta give this to one person who makes me who I am. I'm not, Rob, oh, where are Rob. you? Rob! This is, my, this is my last year. I tell you what, I love all y'all, and I would not rather be any place than right here, right now. I love y'all. <laughs>